and I'm here with Black from the Dwarves. How are you? I feel strong, Aaron. We are at Rebellion here. I can feel the punkiness in the air. You feel strong because you just arrived. I've been. This is like Sunday night, day four, kind of day five actually. Not the party for starts me. Wednesday. I'm giving them everything right now. all the way from Belgium today. It was a tough one, man. Your boy is uh, resilient. You know what I mean? I'm ready to go. So you're doing a, like a European tour around this, though. Yeah, well, a lot of UK and Ireland, a little bit of Europe, yeah. How's it been so far? It's been great. We, well, we played with some uh, uh, tur a Turbo Jungen thing in Hamburg, and it's always funny with them. I mean, yeah. you got the outfits and the whole thing, and they have a great time with it, and then did a cool festival called Roadkill in, in Belgium. Very nice uh, nice people. They did a big pig roast, so the carnivore in me came out. And That's funny. Apologies to you vegans. I'm sorry. I know, I'm a vegan. <laughs> See? I know. And it, and, it, and it was really bad. Like, it's on a spit. Like, you're looking at yeah. it. You can see its face and shit. Yeah, you have to. We did a festival in SoCal uh, a, couple, a couple years ago, a couple months ago. And the, I remember in the backstage, some of the bands, because you know how you being from California also people are very vegan friendly there and some of the bands were really upset because they had those the pigs rotating in the backstage <laughs> it's like ah. pigs rotating man that's you know so that's what you need it's kind of funny speaking of California it's actually you were one of my first interviews like eight years ago uh, before I started this channel and that interview and you have you saw. fantasized in the intervening years about reconnecting at all I just had that one photo and I don't remember how but you had a pair of panties in your back pocket and you pulled them out that sounds about right <laughs> and we're sniffing, about right. sniffing them. You had these random panties. Or Sometimes I have, they smell good. Or I think I had the panties. I think angry Samoans had given them to me, and then you took them, and you were like, let ah. me smell them. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of that, you guys are kind of like, you're kind of known for, back in the day, you used to do some pretty wild things on stage, like self-mutilation and yeah, sex. Fuck and back in the day, <laughs> tonight. You know, we, 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 don't, we don't give up. This is the dwarves. We keep going. But how did that all kind of start? I mean, I know that I remember watching a documentary. There was that that band, The Insaints, and she was doing sex acts on stage in the. Right. This was in the '90s in the Bay Area, and she got arrested. Had that well, ever happened that to you? Was, you know, that was an interesting band. And they, but that was kind of contrived on their part. Like that was part of their thing. Yeah. You know, for us, it was like we just kind of come from an earlier era when shit was got kind of crazy. Yeah. So we didn't plan that stuff. It would just kind of happen, you know. If a girl wants to have sex while you're on stage, it's like it's not very sexual, and it, and it, you know what I mean. Like it, it's just like an act. It's like sort of a, a domination act, you know. It's yeah. very, uh, you know, theatrical. But of course, if you have a girlfriend, they don't see it that way. So yeah, it's, it's difficult. You know, you got to kind of work your way through the live sex acts and shit. But you know, well, you, so you got to have a sense of humor about these things. Why? I guess so, but it's like, uh, how does that, w just like logistically, how way. does it all work? Punk, punk rock used to be a little scarier than it is now. For yeah. those of you who are youngsters who are just coming into it, we, you kind of, their stuff was a little more adult when, when we started. <laughs> of punk is obviously things that are a lot cleaner they're a lot safer than cleaner they used to be. safer that's right <laughs> i know i mean i i don't think i've ever seen anything like that it shows and that's okay too like when i go looking for a girlfriend i want cleaner safer i don't want this stuff you know but for the show you want the excitement you know what i mean but i want to deliver you know yeah I, want, I don't want people to feel like oh yeah dwarves you know that's like every other band you know we want it to be like wild shit happens with us you yeah know? so that's kind of how it is and it becomes a self-perpetuating 
thing, you know, it just keeps happening because people get weirder and weirder, you know. So what do you have planned for tonight's set then? You know, we're just hoping some people come to see us and everybody loves us and, you know, it's hard on a big stage like this to get to do crazy shit because, you know, there's 10 feet between you and the crowd, you know, yeah. so yeah, I like to stage dive and get out there and, you know, have interaction with the crowd. You can't really get that at these big ones, so you got to kind of concentrate on the music more and try and just make a great show and that's you know we got 30 30 plus years of cool songs and so you know we, we we bring that out we actually have to do music at things like this you know yeah it can't be all stage show it's got to kind of be your music so so it's kind of funny you're playing the cast bar right tonight yes. so it's kind of funny i've been in there all weekend filming bands and they have in the middle of the barricades it's almost like a bullpen fence and the security just keep locking it. So tonight when you go on, you should just tell them to open it. Sometimes security is totally cool and sometimes they're upset about everything, you know. You guys are a wild band. Um, a friend of mine, he bought one of your t-shirts for his, I believe she's eight, nine or 10 years old daughter. And it was the, the skull and crossbones. And we, she skull was- Skull and crossboners. Yeah. She was, That's the dwarves. She was wearing the shirt, and we, we said to him, we're like, um, hey, uh, Russell, do you know that there's dicks on your daughter's shirt? <laughs> and he didn't even notice. He's like, oh, shit. I didn't. Yeah, it slips by a lot of people when they buy our merch. They just assume it's like a skull and crossbones because everybody has that. And then you get, you get it home for a year or two, and you go, holy shit. I've been wearing big dicks on me. And yeah. then because we were all walking together and we said that, she kept saying, I got dicks on my shirt. And <laughs> Another child warped by the dwarves. You heard it well, here, right? She's pretty gnarly. She's an awesome little punk rock girl. She legitimately shaved the sides of her head and has a mohawk. Right. So it looks pretty cool on Fair her. Fair enough. She's um, the new generation coming in, but it was a really funny moment because it's like, this is kind of wrong, but really funny. <laughs> a band for so long can you share some of like your favorite stories of being a band like what's some of the fucked up most fucked up shit that's happened to oh you? my god i mean you know i've been stabbed on stage i've had guns pulled on me i i, <laughs> I fucking you know where were you stabbed the hospital i said people you can still kind of see it it's where my, my beard doesn't come in there it was, like, it was in canada you oh, know shit. Yeah, it was one of those things this guy was like you know how like sometimes at punk shows like people stand in front of the stage like this just flipping you off for yeah. like too long? It's like why are you here then if you don't like it? Go uh, away. And the dude had a beer in his hand and I just flashed out with the mic and it broke the beer in his hand. So his hand was all fucked up and he came up and raked it across my throat. It was like, yeah. I mean, so I was I, I was partly to blame. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of how it goes a lot, you know. Sometimes it's the other guy, sometimes it's me. You just never know. So do you guys, you just released some new music last year, is that correct? Yeah. Right. You know, the Dwarves are the last punk band that makes good records. I don't know if you realize that. All the other ones are kind of still playing their song from the 80s and whatever it is. We keep making good records. We made a record last year called Take Back the Night. And, you know, I'm lucky because I'm in a band with a bunch of guys who all write songs and they all have their own other bands. And so real talented group of people and they just keep coming up with material. Nick Oliveri's in there. It was very great rock star guy and all kinds of interesting people in the group that you know yeah. he who cannot be named just walked by didn't want to be in the interview but you know we just uh, uh, we keep cranking out cool music and we just can't stop you know but I saw that Dexter from the offspring has also done some stuff with you guys I love Dexter and you know he he's been so kind to me he's been singing on my record since like I've known him a long time, and he's been singing on my record since like 2004. Always comes in. I go, Dexter, can you please come in? And he always comes in. Great singer, hits everything immediately. He's just super great guy. I don't know. He's How did a, you guys meet? I can't remember anymore. It might have been like a Gilman Street. It might have been when when they were playing. It might have been later. I think it might have been early in the 90s. We kind of had the same lawyer or something, some Hollywood <laughs> thing. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. But it was before he exploded. And and, yeah. the, and then such a great songwriter, that guy. And, he, and they just, he's brilliant. And, and I've been really lucky that way. Like in one way, 
the industry has kind of shunned the dwarves and avoided us when we get left out of a lot of shit. Yeah. But on the other hand, then like real talented people like that or guys like Josh Freeze or Nick Oliveri or different guys will come in and say, I really love this band. I want to be part of this, you know, and you, you get so it's it's been a mixed bag, you know, but yeah. it's been really cool. Like I, I try and be thankful that some super talented people love this band and come in. <laughs> So what do you guys have coming up for the future? After this tour, you know, like little shows here and there, going to Seattle to do a block party, which will be fun. You know, it's like going back there. A lot of the early Dwarves records were uh, part of that Seattle scene, you know, and is that all, all the got... junky people and everything. Yeah. yeah. Is that how you got linked up with Malice McBun for one of your album covers? Because she was kind of from up there. That was through a label called Riot Style, um, oh. where they uh, he introduced me to her. I, I had seen pictures of Malice, but I didn't really know her. Yeah. Yeah, and she wound up on the cover of our record, uh, R uh, Radio Free Dwarves, uh, that came out on Riot Style. And um, yeah, you know, just kind of a network. Everybody knows everybody on some level. You know, there's a there's like two two levels of separation between me and everybody else. You know, like somewhere I know somebody. You know. That's awesome. Well, that's all the questions I have for you today. So Bless thank you, you girl. so much for taking the time. Don't forget me. Thank you for having me. Yeah. This is Blag the Ripper representing the Dwarves, and you're tuned to the sounds of Last Rockers TV, in the place to be. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, go subscribe to my channel for new punk rock videos every week. This video was brought to you by Haunters, The Art of the Scare, available now for free streaming on Amazon Prime. It's the only documentary of its kind where they take you inside the most controversial DIY haunted house there is. This guy charges cans of dog food as admission and brings these people in and plays on their most fucked up fears. It's actually full contact. He's doing things like locking them in boxes, water torture, all kinds of messed up shit. And all along the way, he's filming it for his YouTube channel to really get the fear in people's eyes. Some people come out absolutely loving it, wanting more, and other people come out legitimately traumatized throwing up, pissing themselves. It is crazy. You guys have to go watch this documentary. Check it out on Amazon Prime for free. Haunters, the art of the scare.